Welcome to an introduction to educational research. Today's video is dealing with measures of central tendency and dispersion. So we're going to be taking a look at how a data set, a series of numbers, tends to um, form around the center that's represented by one specific number or tends to disperse out from the center. And of course, we'll be talking about concepts that are familiar with you. Now, again, I've, I've said this in several videos, and I'll just reiterate it. Um, I read the text, although I am well aware that you're intelligent students, and you can read also, but it is done for those individuals who may have difficulty reading text or seeing it. And so I'm reading the text as well as it, there will be closed captioning also. So bear with me. So in general, there are two broad categories that comprise the field of statistics, and they are descriptive statistics and a term that is called inferential statistics. And descriptive statistics describe data sets to try and make them more meaningful and useful. And inferential statistics examine data sets collected from a sample and try and make inferences or statements about the population from which that sample was drawn. And you can see on the bottom right, there's a little diagram that has statistics, and then a bubble on the left that says descriptive statistics, uh, presenting, organizing, and summarizing data. And on the right is the bubble that says inferential statistics, and that's drawing conclusions about a population based on data observed in a sample. The video will address descriptive statistics. This video is going to address descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics are way beyond the uh, scope of this particular video. We're going to talk about measures of central tendency. So that's uh, how a set of numbers tends to form around the center. And you're familiar with the concept of mean and median and mode. And then we're going to talk about one measure of dispersion, which is referred to as the standard deviation. And then we're going to try and make a connection between the two of those. So measures of central tendency describe the middle or center points of a data set using a single number, and then such as the mean, which is the average, by the way, the median or the mode. And by the way, we're not going to spend much time, we're not going to talk about the mode of a set of numbers at all. But the mode simply is that number that appears most of the time. That number that appears most of the time. So if you had a data set <clears throat> and the number 7 appeared 8 times in that data set and no other number appeared 8 times, well then the mode of that data set would be 7. And it's also possible to have bimodal distributions where there's more than one mode. But again, the mode is the number that appears the most times. And it's a very simple statistic, so we're not even going to discuss that here. So we have a data set here, and it's 36 numbers. And it says, to demonstrate these measures of central tendency, we'll be using the data set below, which represents the test scores of 36 graduate students enrolled in EDU 710, Introduction to Educational Research, during the fall semester of 2016. So I want you to take a look at this data set. It's in no particular order, in no particular order. And uh, spend a minute or two, maybe you want to even put the video on pause, and spend a minute or two examining the data set and, and see if there, if there are any kinds of statements that you can make about that just by looking at that. Then turn the video back on and then we'll continue. Well, okay, so one of the ways we can look at this data set is in terms of the mean or the average, which is a measure of central tendency. How scores tend to gather around the mean or the average score. Now, you've had this a million times, I'm sure. To calculate the mean or the average, you add up all the scores in the data set. So you get the sum of all of the scores, and then you divide that total by the total number of scores. And you get a statistic called the mean, or we refer to it in common terms as the average. 
So we have these 36 scores. If I this will the computer will calculate it for us. So one, if I add them all up, the sum of all of the scores is 2,958. And if I divide that by 36, I'll get the mean. And the mean of those test scores is 82.16. And you, that would probably round to 82.2. So the mean score, the one score that represents that entire 36 numbers, is 82.2. That is the mean score. Let's take a look at another same data set we're going to look at. This is the same exact data set. But I have taken the last number out. The last number was 68. I put it over here. And I put in 1,556, which is a much bigger number. Now, when 68 was included in the data set, what 68 was the number, not 1,556. We got a mean of 82.16 or 82.2. But now we're going to compute the mean of the same data set, except this one number has changed. So if we sum all the scores, the sum is now 4,446. And our mean is now 123.5. So the mean has been influenced greatly by this one score. Now, 82.16 or 82.2 looks like a fairly representative number of these scores. However, when I put one extreme score in, the mean is greatly affected. So one of the things about the mean is... If the distribution is relatively normal or bell-shaped, relatively normal or bell-shaped, which means that the variable under study is normally distributed in the population, then the mean is an excellent measure of central tendency. But if the distribution has extreme scores, then you have to be very careful about using the mean. But we'll talk a little more about this later. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the median or the middle score. So consider the following scenario. You are interviewing for a teaching position at an elementary school located in a small school district. The position being offered to you is just what you're looking for. However, due to your student loans, salary is an issue, so you ask about it. And the personnel director informs you that the average salary for teachers in this school that you're applying for is $56,000 a year. Now, what do you think about that? Is that a good deal? Is that a good salary? Not so good? What would be your, uh, your thinking on that? Well, consider this. Consider there are 10 teachers in the school. Seven of them make 35000 but three of them make 95000 If I take the mean, if I add up all of those scores, <clears throat> I get uh, $565,000. And if I divide by the total number of scores, which is 10, I get an average score of 56000 But the number 56 is not a very good representation of this set of scores. Because the three high scores tend to pull the mean higher. So what you might want to ask that personnel director is not what the mean salary or the average salary is, but what the median salary is. Because the median of a set of numbers is that score where 50% of all of the numbers are above it and 50% are below it. So the median is the middle score the middle score, much like the median in a highway is that middle piece that separates the, the lanes. Well, let's take a look at the median. The median of a data set is the middle score, 
50% of all scores in data set are below the median, and 50% of all scores are above the median. And as it turns out, the median does not have to be an actual score in the data set itself. It does not have to be, and then you'll, you'll see that in a minute. So to calculate the median, first you have to arrange the scores from the lowest to the highest. So you have to rearrange scores from the lowest to the highest. If the total number of scores in the data set is odd, you add 1 to the total number of scores and divide the total number of scores by 2. Now let me show you that because it, it may be just a little difficult to conceptualize. Take this silly data set. There are five numbers in it. Two, three, six, six, and seven. So we have a total of five numbers. So the total number of numbers is odd because there are five numbers in the data set. So if I add one to five, I get six. If I divide six by two, I get three. So the median is the third score of that data set. And in this case, two is the first, three is the second, six would be the third. So six would be the median. So if the data set has an odd number in it, an odd number of numbers in the data set, you add one to the total amount of numbers. In this case, it was five when we added one, so that gave us six. You divide the total amount by two. So we divided six by two, and that gave us three. And then we can locate the median because it's the third number in the data set. Now, let's take a look here. If the total number of scores in the data set is an even number, then we divide the total number of scores by 2. Then we add 1 to the result. And then we take the mean of the total number of scores divided by 2 and the total number of scores divided by 2 plus 1. <laughs> That's a mouthful also. Let me demonstrate that also. It's not quite as complicated. So here we have a data set that has six scores. So the total number of scores is even. We have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Those are the numbers in the data set. So if the total number of scores is even, then we divide the total number of scores by 2. So we have six scores in the data set, so we divide six by two, and we get three. And then, <coughs> pardon me, we add one to the result. So three plus one would give us four. So the total number of scores divided by two is three, and I add one, I get four. Well, now I take the mean of the third and fourth score. So the third score is 13. The fourth score is 14. So I take the mean or the average or the middle score. Well, what score would become in the middle of 13 and 14? It would be 13.5. So the median is the score that is between the third and fourth score in the data set or 13.5. So, again, if the total number of scores is even, you add one to the, I'm sorry, if the total number of scores is odd, like in this case five, you add one, which makes six, you divide by two, which gives us three, and then the third score. In this case, it's so easy to see you wouldn't do any of that. You'd just take the middle score. And here, if the total number of scores is even, then you take the total number of scores, which is six in this case, and you divide it by two, and you get three. So we're going to be interested in the third score. And then you take the total number of scores divided by two, which was three, and you add one is four. So we're going to be interested in the mean between 13 and 14, the number that falls between 13 and 14. So that would be, we, if we added that up, it would be 27, and if we divided by 2, that would give us 
or you can just see visually here 13.5. But in our next example, you won't be able to so easily see it visually. Well, let's take a look at a more um, a larger data set now. Okay, right here, down here are the 36 test scores that we looked at before. These are hypothetical, obviously. The 36 test scores. So it says the data set to the right represents 36 test scores of the graduate students enrolled in EDU 710. The scores have been rearranged so that they go from the lowest, which is 58, all the way up to the largest, which is 99. There are a total of 36 scores, which is an even number. And the mean, or average, which we had computed before, we know to be 82.16, or we rounded to 82.2. Since there are an even number of scores to compute the median, we need to divide the total number of scores by 2. Okay, so total number of scores is 36, and we divide that by 2, so we get 18 or the 18th number. So we're going to be interested in the 18th number here. Now we add 1 to the result. We add 1 to 18 and that gives us 19 or the 19th number. So we're going to be interested then in the 18th and 19th number. So here they are, 83 and 84, and now we compute the mean of the 18th and 19th numbers. Well, compute the mean. We take the score that's in the middle of 83 and 84, which would be 83.5. Or we could add those up, and you'd get 167. And if you divided that by 2, you'd get 83.5. And we get 83 plus 84 divided by 2 is 167 divided by 2. And the mean is 83.5. So that's how we would compute the median. I'm sorry, is 83. That's how we would compute the median of this data set. And if you recall, the mean of this data set was 82.2 and the median 83.5. So they're fairly close together. They're fairly close together. So this is a fairly normally distributed set of data. When the mean and median are close together, the data is pretty normally distributed. Let's take a look at another example here. Ah, OK. On the uh, right-hand side here, we have the salaries for the Los Angeles Lakers uh, National Basketball Association players from the year 2001 and 2002. And so you can see Shaquille O'Neal is 21, almost 21 and a half million is his yearly salary. And then Kobe Bryant, 11 and a quarter million. And as we go down, uh, Hori is three... 5.3 million, and Fox is 3.7 million, and so on down. So when we get to the bottom of the list, the lowest salary is $465,850, which is quite a salary. But, but if you take a look on the left-hand side, you can see a bar graph of the distributions. So you can see that O'Neill's salary is an extreme, extreme score. So if we total up all of the scores, all of the salaries, all of the scores in this data set, we get 54,184,907. Now, the mean of that would be 4,168,069 cents. So the mean is a little over $4 million. That's including O'Neill, which is an extreme score. If we computed the mean, and, and you can see over in the diagram, here is the mean, right here, a little over $4 million when O'Neill's score is in it. If we computed the mean without O'Neill's score, then the mean drops down to $2.7 million. And you can see that by the green line here. But if we computed the median, the median salary, that score that is one half right in the middle of the salary, 
it's down to 1.4 million. So you can see that by this line here. So that's the median. Now, the median, in this sense, is a much better representation of this data set than the mean is, because the mean is pulled to the right, to the extreme, by the extreme scores. So let's take another. So, so this is the point. This is the important point about this. The mean is a very good measure of central tendency when the distribution is considered normal. But when it is skewed, this is referred to as a skewed distribution because there are extreme scores, then the median is a better measure of central tendency. So here in the middle diagram, is a typical bell-shaped or normal distribution of scores. This is what a typical bell shape looks like, and I'm sure you're familiar with that. This type of distribution indicates that the variable under study is normally distributed throughout the data set. It has a symmetrical shape with most of the scores occurring around the mean. Most of the scores fall within here. And fewer of the scores move out towards the tails of the distribution. In this kind of a distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode are identical, and the mean is usually the preferred measure of central tendency. Now, if we look on the left side here, we have a positively skewed distribution. Most of the scores fall on the left side, and a few extreme scores fall down towards the right. This would be tip, this would be representative of the um, Los Angeles Lakers salary schedule. So you'll notice that the mean is pulled towards the extreme scores, and the median the median is to the left of the mean. The median is to the left of the mean. And in this case, the median is the most preferred score of central tendency because the distribution is skewed. If you take a look on the extreme right side, we have a distribution that has a negative skew where most of the scores fall on the right and uh, just a few extreme scores tail out to the left. Tail out to the left. And you'll notice here, that the mean is pulled towards the extreme scores and the median is the best measure of central tendency. So it's important when a piece of research, when researchers present you data, if they present you mean scores, it might be important that they present also the median score, the median scores, and the score called the standard deviation, which we're going to talk about very briefly in a minute. But the thing you want to be aware of so that you can analyze uh, research is if the researchers are using random sampling, then there's a really good chance that they have somewhat of a normal distribution and probably the mean might be the appropriate measure of central tendency. However, if they are not using rounding sampling, then the distribution may be skewed and the mean may not be the most appropriate measure. Okay, so I want to take a look at variability and a uh, statistic called the standard deviation. And I don't want you to get blown away. By you. I just want you to get a general concept of this. This is not a statistics course. So as mentioned earlier, one good way to get an understanding of a data set is to look at how the data tends to gather around a middle or central point. And that's the mean, the median, and the mode, again, which is the most frequent score. We didn't really talk about that. However, all data sets have variation. Not all individuals will have the same exact value for all variables being measured. And this variation, this difference in scores, can also give us very important information about the number set. And the most common statistic used is referred to as the standard deviation. And it represents the typical distance from any point in the data set to the center. 
and it's sort of the average distance of data points from the center or the mean. And I, you'll get to see what that looks like here. All right, now you don't really have to know how to calculate this, but I'm just going just to hopefully try and give you an understanding. To calculate the standard deviation, we calculate the mean or average of the data set. That's all the scores. Okay, so I have 10 scores in a data set here. So if I'm going to calculate the mean or the average, I add up all of these scores, and since there are 10 of them, I divide by 10, and I wind up with 14.8. That is the mean score of this data set. Now I subtract the mean from each number in the data set. So the first number is 16, so 16 minus 14.8 gives me 1.2. The second number in the data set is 2. Well, 2 subtracted from 14.8 gives me a negative 12.8. The next number is, you'll have to know your uh, addition and subtraction of integers to, uh, to get that, but trust me, that's what it is. The next number is 26, so 26, if I subtract the mean, 14.8 from 26, I get 11.2. The next number is 4, if I subtract 14.8 from 4, I get negative 10.8, and so on. So I get positive and negative numbers here as I subtract the mean from each of these scores. And actually, if I took all of these scores right here and added them up, I would get 0. I would get 0. So, in this form, these scores are not useful, but if I square the score, if I have the, the score minus the mean, and I square it, so 1.2 squared gives me 1.44. If I square 12 point, a negative 12.8, I get positive 163.84, and so on, because if you multiply a negative number by a negative number, you get a positive, and again, that's integers again. So if I square all of these numbers, I wind up with this as the data set. And the total of that data set is 927.12. And if I divide that by the total number of numbers, which is 10, I get 92.71. And since I squared these numbers, I have to take the square root of that, and I get 9.62 or 9.6. Okay, so now again, I realize that may be somewhat complicated, but that's not so, so important. But here we have a standard deviation of 9.6. So our mean is 14.8. That's right here, the middle of the distribution. One standard deviation above the mean would be 14.8 plus 9.6, because that's one standard deviation unit. So that gives me 24.1. Two standard deviations would be 14.8 plus 9.6 plus 9.6 would give me 33.7. And three standard deviations would be 14.8 plus 9.6 plus 9.6 plus 9.6. So 43.3 is three standard deviations above the mean. The same going the other way. The mean is 14.8, and if I subtract one standard deviation from that, I get 5.2. If I subtract two standard deviations from that, I get negative 4.4, and if I subtract three, I get negative 14. So the point is this, the mean score is 14.8, and according to normally distributed data, 68% of all scores will fall between negative one standard deviation and positive one. So about 68, <coughs> 60 to 70, six or seven of these scores should fall between 5.2 and 24.1. And they do. We have 10, 8, 22, 17, 9, and 16. So six, six of them fall there. So that meets the rule. 
and 99-95% of all scores will fall between negative two standard deviations and positive two standard deviations. So the point for you then is this. A standard deviation, like a measure of central tendency, is an important piece of information because it tells you how far scores are from the mean. If you have a tiny standard deviation, that means that um, the distribution probably looks like this. It goes straight up and straight down like that. Everything is close together. It's a pretty homogeneous group, pretty homogeneous. If the standard deviation is spread out so that the distribution might look like this, well, that means that you have total big variations in scores. So when the mean or median is reported, when the mean is reported, actually, because the standard deviation would be only reported when the mean was the measure of central tendency. When that data is reported, they should always report the mean and the standard deviation so you get a sense of how much spreading out there is as well as how much central tendency there is. And that's an important way of looking at a data set and research results. Well, I hope this wasn't terribly, terribly confusing. The idea is that um, both pieces of information, central tendency and the standard deviation, the variability, are important pieces to have. Well, okay, that's it. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Sorry about the statistics.